No, no, no. Oh, yeah, she's like, gave away all my stuff here. I don't know if you guys saw this, so I put up here. This is how scalar multiplication works. You just multiply parts. You worked with matrices before, hopefully? Yeah. So when you multiply matrix by scalar, you just multiply all the parts. Matrix multiplication is freaky as hell. Uh, Say uh, careful. Uh, vector multiplication has two different ways to look at it. So we're going to, that's going to be the section 12, 3 and 12, 4. Uh, so what were the vectors again? What was, uh, what did I call them, A, B, C? Yeah. What was A? Negative one, three, two. All right, let me ask you. one, three, two. Two, okay. And B is two, one, negative two. And C is three, negative four, and zero. All right, so hopefully the links weren't too challenging, but be careful. Uh, we had a discussion in the math department about the importance of notation and, and, and teaching notation, because you want to be able to go back and know what the hell you did. The vector A is this. So you're not going to be able to write the vector A and write after it something else entirely, because that obviously won't be true, because A, the vector A equals this. When I find the length of it, I'll use the symbols that we associated with absolute value, but now we're learning that the idea of absolute value is bigger than we realized. It's always the length. So if I want to find the length of A, I denote that with this. And of course, the computation is easy. So here would be 1 plus 9 is 10 plus 4 is 14. So the length of A is square root of 14. The length of B comes out to be nice, right? Square root of 9, 3. And the length of C also comes out to be nice. 3, 4, 5 triangle, right? Because I made this 0. So this will be 5 eventually. Cool. 9, 16, 25, square root of 25, 5. Cool. I like it. All right. Uh, and then I ask you, let's see, this is uh, number uh, the first part. Then I ask you the A, what was it, A minus 2B? Plus 3C. A minus 2B plus 3C? Yes. All right, so that, obviously that, you should eat that up. Hopefully it makes it now. Now, if you understood this, you should have understood this. How do you do twice B? Well, it's going to be 4, four one, 2, two one, negative 4. How long would that be? How long would the vector 2B be? Twice as long as the vector B. So it's going to have a length of? Oh, this sounds just remarkably familiar. All right. Uh, sorry. <laughs> sound like the shield generator will be quite up. All right. <laughs> so then you just got to do negative 1 minus 4 plus 9, right? 4. Let's see if I can do this in my head. Uh, negative 6. I'm sorry. 3 minus 2 is 1. Minus 12 is negative 13? No, negative 11. Yeah, yeah, Jeff. And then 2 plus 4 is 6. Awesome. So then the next part is the length of this. I could call this the vector D. I've made a new vector, right? That has components A, negative 2B, 3. So that, that's composed of those three vectors, right? It's uh, what we call a... Uh, Linear combination of those vectors. So if anybody's had linear algebra, that sounds vaguely familiar. I like it. Okay, good. Uh, if you haven't had it, it doesn't matter. Just forget it. So the length of this, you do the same way you did the lengths of those. So it's going to be the square root of 16, 121, 137, plus 36, 173. Yeah. Yay. All right. Which I don't know if it's prime right Everybody cool so far? And the computation level is still pretty low, which is nice. It's a nice intro to this. Don't don't uh, don't assume it's going to stay this easy. Uh, part D was this one. We're going to ask you to do this here, right? The b hat over uh, b hat b over the length of b. So if multiplication just means multiplying all the interiors, and multiplication and division are the same thing, there is no division. There's just multiplying by the reciprocal or something. Dividing by the length is just dividing each piece by that number, right? So this is going to be each piece divided by three, so it comes out to be, where to go? Two-thirds, one-third, negative two-thirds. 
Now, if I take any vector and divide it by its length, what will the length of that new vector be? One. Think about it. Doesn't that make sense? If I divide it by what its length is, it will become a length of one. Let that be beautiful. And then I can construct these building block unit vectors in the direction that I want them to be in. Right? So if I want a, a unit vector in the direction of B, this is how I can construct it. I can even call it UB, <laughs> right? If you wanted to. It's not an official thing, but that would be the unit vector in the direction of B. You guys understand what's happening? And then I could, I could use that to construct other things. So these unit vectors are really useful. Um, so part E, you've already saw one way to do this, but I have a vector there that's in the direction of B that has a length of 1. So if I want a vector in the direction of B that has a length of 6, I just take that bad boy and multiply by 6. Right? So 6 times that. Well, so UB. Uh, so F, what was E? Oh, E was the length. Yeah, yeah. I got you. E is the length is 1. We already talked about that. My bad. 1. Yay! Yes, ma'am. So for F, I know that you're just going to multiply the unit vector by 6, but could you also just take the original Z and double it since... Totally, totally. That would totally work here. But if I wanted something with a length of 11, <laughs> I'd rather construct a unit vector and then just multiply by 11. Right, so it's a more general way. In this specific problem, I picked numbers that you could do it a different way. Beautiful. So here you end up with, either way you do it, you end up with 4, 2, negative 4. And you can verify, you do the length of that, and you can verify it's got a length of 6. Right? I like it. Okay, cool. Uh, and then the very last thing was talking about the idea of a unit vector. And if I took all the unit vectors, if I had them plus start at the origin, that would just make the unit sphere, right? The analog to the unit circle that we all love and hold dear, right? Okay. Uh, and the, the points on the back, I mean, did you guys have a lot of trouble with that? Did you check it out with people near you? Does somebody feel really good about what they did? They want me to put it up here? Because I've run out. You guys feel okay about them? I got the confident man here. Let's see. <laughs> no. He's, he's giving me full reign to do what I want. So here we go. More, okay. While this is warming up, I want to point out on page 842 in my book, I don't know if you have the, the thick one book to rule them all, I don't know where it is, um, the properties of vectors, so they are commutative, kind of makes sense. They inherit, they inherit a lot of properties of numbers, right? Oh, you guys are all looking at that. Because vectors are composed of numbers. So numbers are commutative, so so are vectors and so forth, uh, across addition. So uh, I'm not going to go over those properties. You should be able to look at them. Um, so let's see. You could do one big one and just do all the vector, uh, all the, 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 the points on there, right? But this is the real two. Uh, oh, there's my early one. Um, so A is 2, 3, 1. So where you put the letters, the way that I put the letters, those are the positive directions. So if I want negative x, I've got to go that way. Negative y that way. Negative z that way. Oh, shoot. It's really washing out here. Poor little dude. Okay, cool. Uh, so 2 in the x direction. 3 in the y direction. You guys see what's happening? So don't say 2 and then go, well, 3 is over there. Oh, no, 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 no. 2 in the x, 3 in the y, and then 1 in the z. So, so far, it looks good. Check. How'd everybody do with that? You guys see that? If you didn't get there, do you see why you got it wrong? You're never going to do that mistake again. Okay. Part B, I was going to say, where the hell is this? Wait a minute. So, negative 1 in the x, I'm going to go there. Negative 1 in the x.
Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Negative 1 in the x. 4 in the y. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then down 3 in the z. I love it. So that's good. Check. Let me stop there for a second. But see, could you tell me that that's below the xy plane for sure? No, you have no idea. Once I put it there, you can't really step back and see it. So that's, and it's, it's not your fault. It's not anybody's fault. We have a 2D surface we're trying to represent 3D on. It's always going to have problems. Um, so part C, I'm sorry, C. Oh, you got C and D on the same. I like it. You just were like, screw it. I'm trying to draw on these axes. So three, one, two, three. This is C now, right? Negative two, so back two. And then down one, check. I love it. And then the last one is back three, right? So one, two, three. Back three. Back, uh, back five. One, two, three, four, five. And then down six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That looks good. Now that one especially... That last one is like, that looks like it's sitting in the XY plane maybe. But it's actually deep in there, on the other side, below the XY plane. But it's freaking 3D. Perspective issues are going to be a big problem with this, right? I mean, so give yourself a little anyway, and I will too. Right? To a point. Uh, okay. So any questions on that handout? Is that pretty good? Yes, sir. Where can we find this wonderful graphic? So I was going to print out you know, a couple more sheets of it, but I want you to go to Google, and if you like what I found, you just type in there either isometric, ISO metric, or type in 3D graphic paper. Google images, say again. You can buy like three packages. Totally. Yeah, you can buy pads of it. If you Google search, they have pads of it. They probably have them at yeah, Office like Depot, maybe? I don't know. Where would they have that? I'm pretty sure they must have them there. Uh, I don't know where else. Free Maca? Maybe. Yeah, Free Maca has got the big old budget. Whatever. All right. Yes. Yeah, um, <laughs> one last little thing, and then we'll do our uh, we'll do our uh, field trip. Um, So there are, uh, we're going to investigate two of the main ways to multiply vectors. We already saw scalar multiplication. That's easy. It's always easy. Ooh, number two. Multiplying a vector by another vector gets strange. And there's two different ways to look at what you want the result to be. So you guys have all multiplied matrices by this point, hopefully. No? You do the, um, we're not going to do... Matrices. You, if you take a linear algebra, you're going to do it. You're going to live in matrix land if you take a linear algebra. Yes, there we go. I got a person verifying that truth. Um, but we're not going to go over matrix multiplication. Let's focus on what we got to worry about here. Uh, you've got what's called the dot product, which is sort of a. Uh, the consideration that the dot product makes is more about. How do I want to say this? Uh, how much the vectors are agreeing or disagreeing is, is a quick way to say that. Right? So obviously there's going to be a lot of getting into it. But if I have a vector, here's how you designate the dot product. It's like that, A dot B. Now we're going to have some geometrical proofs of why the dot product formula has some multiple ways to represent itself, which is awesome. It's going to lend a way to... Uh, find the angle between any two vectors in any amount of dimensions. We'll be able to do it rather easily. No matter where the hell they live or how many components they have, we can always find the angle between them easy using the two ways to think about dot product. So that's going to come up. And then cross product. You can designate it like this. A cross B. And this is... Uh, this actually is zero 
when this is the most. So the cross product is more about, um, how do I want to say this? So like the cross product of the uh, vector on the x-axis, vector on the y-axis would be a vector on the z-axis. That's the cross product. So it, it deals with, uh, for example, it deals with angular momentum, torque. It deals with all these kind of things. Uh, uh, we're going to have, uh, let me think I want to do that. To, yeah, sure. <laughs> this is going to have a form that looks a lot like this, but then the other form of this is going to be dependent on uh, determinants. And, and that's another thing you do with matrices. You guys have ever figured out determinants of matrices? Cofactors? I mean, you know, so, oh, shit. Okay. Um, so one way to uh, do the dot product, the most direct way to do it, uh, is the way you would hope it would be done. So if I had A was 1, 7, and B is negative 2, 1, the dot product will end up being, what do you hope it would be? What do you hope the multiplication of? 1, 3, 2, 1, 7, that's 1. Yeah, so the interesting thing about the dot product is also called the scalar <coughs> product. So one big difference between the, another big difference between these two is that this answer will always be a scalar, and this answer will always be a vector. So it kind of makes sense that we want two different interpretations of multiplication because of those two things. This is sort of a measure of how much they agree with each other. What do I mean by that? If they're 90 degree angles, the answer to a dot product will always be zero, because they don't agree with each other at all. So it's sort of a measure of how much one lies in the direction of the other one. In fact, we're going to use it for that purpose, do projections of one vector on another vector, the shadow of this vector on that vector. We'll use the dot product to calculate it. Okay. Uh, so this would be actually 1 times negative 2 plus 7 times 1. So it'll just be 5. And then... the we're obviously going to prove that, and there's a whole other way to represent this that's dependent on the angle between these vectors. So that'll, come, that'll give us a way to always find the angle between any two vectors easily, if we look at it both ways at once. Okay, uh, so this is section 12.3, and this is section 12.4. So next time we're going to just focus on those two sections, right? Um, as a little bit of an intro, we obviously didn't get into either one of those very deeply. <laughs>